All right, this is a video I never thought that I would make. This is a picture of my apartment. I live right here. And as you can see, it is underwater. And why is my apartment underwater, you might ask? Well, last week, the category for Hurricane Helene went through my city of Atlanta, Georgia. And this hurricane was massive. It flooded many areas, left millions without power, and completely isolated some parts of the country. And I, surprisingly, am a person whose life has been affected by this hurricane. This is the parking lot in my apartment complex, which got up to over two feet of water. Luckily, my car wasn't parked back there, so I still have a car. And this is the inside of my apartment, which got about four inches of water. It rained like crazy in this hurricane. In Atlanta, this was the biggest rain that we've had in the last 150 years. With 11 inches of rain in 48 hours, beating the record of nine inches in 1886. And because of this flooding, many of my things are ruined and my apartment is no longer in living condition. The few things that weren't ruined are now piled up in my car. But despite all this, I am doing it fine. I'm currently at my mom's house right now and my dog, if anybody's wondering, is also doing fine. She's enjoying the quiet life in North Georgia. But I will say that these past few days has been tough as my life has changed very quickly. I don't have my own place to live anymore and most of my stuff is ruined. It's been a very thought-provoking weekend. In this video, I just want to talk about eight things that I've been thinking about these past few days after being affected by this hurricane. But before I begin, I do want to mention that I'm doing fine financially and resource-wise. But if you do want to donate to the hurricane relief, I created a fundraiser that you'll notice here, there, or there, and all the proceeds will go to the American Red Cross. And of course, there's tons of other charities that you can donate to if you want to donate for this hurricane relief. But the first thing that I've been thinking about is that life can change very quickly, unexpectedly, and be completely out of your control. So having something like this happen to you is a very surreal thing. I mean, we've all seen these news stories where people's lives have been turned upside down in a day due to extreme weather. We often think that these are just freak accidents that happen to other people, but these things can happen to anybody. I mean, it's happened to me. My life has changed drastically over the last four days. I mean, I went to bed Thursday evening, not even thinking about the storm. And when I woke up Friday morning and stepped out of bed, I immediately realized my entire floor was covered in water. And then I walked over to my living room and I saw my dog very concerned sitting on the couch. And then I just started piling all my stuff on my furniture so the flood wouldn't ruin it. Life can change very quickly, unexpectedly, and completely out of your control. I mean, last week I would have never expected that I would be in this situation where I was impacted by a hurricane, especially given the fact that Atlanta is decently far away from the coast. But life can change very quickly, and these freak accidents can happen to you too. The second thing that I've been thinking about is your stuff is just future garbage. So as I said, when I woke up that morning, I realized my apartment was flooded. However, it was just beginning to flood. So I went around my house and put up all my possessions above the water to try to save them. However, a lot of my things were ruined. My rug, my couch, my bed frame, my dresser, and other things got submerged in water and now ruined. Everything has this mildew smell right now and is probably growing mold. But when I was sitting in my flooded apartment, the storm was going outside and water was coming in, I had this realization that everything in this apartment was now garbage. All this stuff was now a burden that I had to get rid of and replace. And it's the same with your stuff. Your stuff is just future garbage. All of your stuff will eventually end up in the landfill. And so we shouldn't put too much value in our possessions because they could all be gone in an instant if a hurricane hits your house like it did with mine. And in the end, in that moment, what's going to matter is whether or not you're going to be okay and all those possessions can be replaced. The third thing is expensive stuff creates expensive problems. Another thing that I was thinking about as all my possessions were submerged in water 
was how although this sucks, I actually didn't lose that much because most of my stuff I bought secondhand. All in all, I probably lost one or two thousand dollars worth of stuff. Although this hurricane impacted my life, I didn't lose that much because I don't have that much. I choose to live a very minimalist lifestyle and be frugal and just buy secondhand things. Whereas other people that have expensive things would view this scenario very differently because they might have lost tens of thousands of dollars from losing their possessions. And maybe it's stuff they hadn't paid off yet. On this channel, I talk a lot about not giving that much importance to your possessions and choosing to live a less materialistic lifestyle. And in this specific situation, this rare situation where a hurricane comes in and destroys all your possessions, your problems aren't as big because you didn't lose as much. Whereas an expensive lifestyle would create much more expensive problems. The fourth thing is have an emergency fund. Another thing that I preach over and over again on this channel is the importance of having an emergency fund of six to 12 months of living expenses. In this unique scenario is a prime example of why it is so important to have an emergency fund. You never know when your life is gonna change drastically. I mean, imagine two people who have been impacted by this hurricane. One who has an emergency fund and the other who is living paycheck to paycheck. The person with the emergency fund would have more resources, could survive without an income and start a new life somewhere. Whereas the person without the emergency fund could potentially have their entire life turned upside down. I've had so many people comment in my videos, what's the point of having money if it's just sitting in the bank? It is for scenarios like this. In case a hurricane comes in and destroys your apartment and everything inside of it like it did with me. This sucks and is a huge burden, but I know that I'm gonna be okay because when times were good, I was able to save money and now that times are bad, I have this large amount of financial resources to back me up. If I need to move apartments, I can afford it. When I need to refurnish my apartment, I can afford it. If I need to take a break, I can afford it. So please take your finances seriously and build an emergency fund because if you are in the scenario that I'm in right now, you are really going to hope that you have an emergency fund and you made the right decisions when times were good to save your money for when times got bad. Now the next thing that I've been thinking about is insurance only covers you for what you don't need. When all of my stuff was submerged in water, the storm was going on outside and I was just sitting on my couch waiting for the storm to end. I started to think to myself, I have renter's insurance. I might get a big check from this. However, I then read through my insurance policy and I discovered that renter's insurance doesn't cover natural flooding. Despite paying for renter's insurance month after month, I'm going to have to use my own money to recover my possessions. And I think that just sums up insurance. We get insurance to protect us against life surprises. But when we actually need it, it's not covered. Denied? You're denying my claim? I don't understand. I have full coverage. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hoganson, but our liability is spelled out in paragraph 17. <laughs> Which gives a bigger importance to having six to 12 months of an emergency fund because you can't always count on insurance. And most of the times in this world, you're just going to be on your own. Now, the sixth thing is renting has its perks. So right now, I do not have my own place to live and I'm not sure how long it's gonna take for them to fix the place. I think it's gonna take a long time, especially given the fact that everybody needs contractor help right now. I'm probably gonna end up having to move apartments. But one thing that I've been thinking about these last few days is the difference between being a renter and an owner. In this unique scenario, if you are a renter, you can just get out of the lease and move to a new apartment. Whereas if you are an owner, you have to spend tens of thousands of dollars of your own money that is most likely not coming from insurance to renovate your place. 
I mean, I cannot imagine being a landlord in this scenario. This would be a nightmare, worst case scenario. And I think a lesson from this is that renting has its perks. Many people think that renting is just throwing away your money, but in this scenario, it's a huge advantage to be a renter because you don't have to worry about all the aftermath of this hurricane. Now, the seventh thing is you can't do life alone. In crisis times like these, it really makes you realize the importance of community because when you're in a crisis, you need help from other people. I mean, this past week, I've gotten help from my friends, neighbors, and family. My apartment is not in a livable condition right now, but luckily I have options and I can live here with my parents in the meantime until I figure things out. Whereas if I didn't have that support, I might be forced to stay in that apartment, which could cause health problems from all the mold and mildew. In this digital age, we are losing community. However, in moments like this, you see the importance of community. Community is the thing that's gonna help you get through it. Human beings are social animals and we are much stronger together. Now, the final thing is it could always be worse. So although the title of this video is a bit dramatic, I am doing fine. And as I said, my dog is thriving and enjoying the quiet life in rural North Georgia. My accent is getting more and more Southern every single day. But I am fine and I do not need any help. Again, if you would like to donate, I did open up the fundraiser for the American Red Cross. But although my life has changed from this hurricane, I lost my stuff and I don't have my own place to live, a lot of people have it way worse. I mean, people in Asheville, North Carolina have been isolated for days. Small towns have been completely destroyed and many people have lost their loved ones. And I think in scenarios like this, it's important to count your blessings because it could always be worse. The world is a messy place and we need to stop focusing so much on our differences and just come together. But thank you so much for watching. I will keep you updated on this journey. Hopefully in a month or so, this will all be behind me. But with that, muchas gracias. Que tenga un buen día. Nos vemos, chico.